Good morning. I'm Amy Upton, Director of Spiritual Adult Formation here at Westminster Church. It's always been my belief that at the intersection of our ever-forming faith in God and in individual walks through life, there are certain transformative moments. One of mine was at Wesley Seminary. I chose to attend Wesley because it was diverse in student body and had a wider variety of denominational backgrounds. During my time there, I had noticed during lunch in the cafeteria that all the Caucasian students sat with Caucasians. The Korean students all sat with the Koreans and the African-American students with African-Americans. One day I decided to join a table of African-Americans. I sat quietly at first, eating my lunch and then initiated conversation with the person sitting next to me. As I stood up and started towards the dessert table, I overheard someone at the table say, what is that white person doing here? In a non-invitational tone of voice. I felt all kinds of emotion, defensive, anger, fear, prejudice, loss of confidence. Truly, I was stunned. My intention had been misunderstood and my effort to reach out in a spirit of love rejected. I had to decide quickly what I was going to do. Fleeing was my first thought, but I went for better or for worse to a place of humor, attempting to soften the discomfort. I returned and said, well, this white person is back. And as I went to my chair, not comfortable with my response, but not wanting to flee either. I remember wanting to speak from my heart, which was wildly pounding, and open myself up to learn more from my fellow seatmates. I asked the table about the remark I had overheard. They explained to me that they liked using their lunch break to be together with those whom they most closely identified, looking at lunch as a time of respite with one another. Then I explained my desire to sit with them that day came from wanting to stretch my horizons, to come to know others of different denominations, different experiences, and perspectives different from my own. Through this conversation and others that we went on to have, we talked about ideas for encouraging interracial and interdenominational opportunities at Wesley. Through this conversation and others, we went on to talk about ideas and we eventually held monthly discussions at designated lunch tables for inner dialogue. It was a John Calvin moment for me where people honestly sharing differing ideas, points of view and opinions in a safe, calm way as we opened up, we learned about our misperceptions, our misjudgments. Essentially, Calvin's third use of the law, it's not my way and it's not your way, but it's in the dialogue we discover a third way that is so much better than either original ways. Flash forward to today, as I confront my own racism, and white privilege, I look back to look forward. Having just led a spiritual writing series here at Westminster, we used various tools to examine ourselves, to examine our theological language, to look at our legacies. We were using writing prompts to get us thinking and wrestling, like the writing prompt, quote, 
Prejudice is just what its root part says. It's prejudging, a preconceived opinion arrived at without just grounds or sufficient knowledge on which it can be based. We would think in the class what might be an example of our own prejudging. Writing can help you discern your thoughts, can help you identify your learning edges, to see yourself honestly, and to set some goals. One important step in overcoming our prejudice within ourselves is to recognize the hopes and the needs of others. Too often, people from different backgrounds cannot imagine each other's suffering, fears, or anger. The best way to bridge that gap is to get to know each other. Martin Luther King's love and his deep kindness taught me that, quote, hate is rooted in fear, but hatred and bitterness can never cure the disease of fear. Only love can do that. Hate paralyzes life. Love releases it. Hatred confuses life. Love harmonizes it. Hatred darkens life. Love illuminates it." Unquote. If today's world is to be continued to be healed, that healing must be achieved one person at a time. Choose to sit at a different table. Tolerance and understanding must come from each of us arising out of everyday opportunities and our contacts and our conversations. Speak up in the face of injustice and love one another as you would want to be loved. And I end by reading Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 10. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Give all to the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Amen.